I was first elected 21 years ago to Kirklees Council in West Yorkshire. I've been elected and re-elected six times to the News and Ward, uh, where we've won every local election since 1996. That is a record 18 local election wins on the trot. I've been Green Party Energy spokesperson for a few years now, and I've done many press, TV and radio interviews speaking on renewable energy, insulation standards and the folly of fossil fuels. I've worked for over 20 years in the energy efficiency and renewable energy sector in both the public and private sector, managing projects, developing policy and representing the renewable energy industry. I do have a life outside politics. Um, I'm a local government association peer mentor for all green councillors, providing help and support to the 300 plus councillors we have, many of whom are very new. I've been a member of several local government association policy boards and through that I've given direct policy input to government ministers. I've also provided evidence to a parliamentary select committee of MPs on the need for more funding for flood defences. I have been ignored by some very important people. Um, I was a member of the EU Committee of the Regions for the last five years and through that an EU delegate to four of the most recent UN climate talks. So why, why the House of Lords? Um, I think it would send a strong statement for the Green Party uh, to send an elected politician to the unelected House of Lords. I represent a constituency. I can speak with authority and authenticity about the impact of government policies on local people, just like an MP can. So what would I bring to Parliament? Uh, I'm one of very few Green politicians who's actually initiated and implemented Green Party policies. I successfully proposed the UK's first universally free insulation scheme in Kirklees. Over 50,000 homes were insulated and the Kirklees Warm Zone scheme won national awards and national recognition. I proposed a policy effectively banning fracking in our council area in our local plan by establishing that any planning application for fracking would have to demonstrate how it would have to have net zero impact on climate change. This approved policy set a precedent for all councils around the country. I've influenced global policy by getting a stronger focus on local climate action at the UN climate talks by forging alliances with local and regional governments internationally. For me, this feels like the right time. I wouldn't want to do this role 20 years ago uh, without all the experience I've gained being an elected politician. I think it gives me more legitimacy in a chamber with a dubious legitimacy. I also like having a strong link with the many diverse communities that I represent. It keeps my feet on the ground and all politicians need that. I know both Jenny and Natalie well, having worked with them for many years, so I know we would make a great team. Obviously we're different, have different strengths, different backgrounds, different skills, but that's what makes for good teams. So what would be my priorities in the House of Lords? Well, addressing climate change is a very strong focus for me. I've had some real success at getting innovative policies adopted, and that means being aware to opportunities, negotiating with other parties, and getting legislation passed. I'd also like to see an end to the right to buy council of council houses, because we desperately need more social housing for those on the very lowest incomes, and we need to build thousands of new low energy demand council houses. So please support me. Andrew Cooper is your first choice on the House of Lords ordered list. Thank you. Thank you so much, Andrew. Four minutes. That's absolutely great. Not that this is a reverse race or anything. And <laughs> finally,